So it's release day for Honka Star Rail and I thought I'd go through my launch tier list and because amazingly guys, we did just hit 100,000 subscribers, which I can't thank you enough for. We are gonna do another $100 giveaway in this video. Be subscribed and leave a comment, you'll go into the draw. I've got two other giveaways going on my other videos as well. So all those giveaways will be announced in community posts across the next week or so, uh, and we will get the winners their prizes. But when we look at the tier list, now there's a few things I wanna talk about before we get into it. First of all, this is my opinion. Take it with a massive grain of salt. I am one person, it's very hard for anyone to make a concise tier list, so this is completely subjective. So if you like a character, build that character, go nuts. I think the game is pretty decently balanced across the board, that you can play any character you like and you can build a team around them to have some fun. So just get other opinions, read characters yourself, have some thoughts, because no tier list is ever going to be correct. Like I said, they are completely subjective. The other thing is the big elephant in the room, if you will, I am going to, I am releasing this video before the launch because I can't record it after launch because I'll be streaming for who knows how long. So feel free to jump into stream and check in with me and see what you think. Um, but I will be streaming here on YouTube. Just if the red circles around my name, you know, I'm, I'm streaming. So there's been a lot of talk about leaks, data mines, all that stuff. Now, my take on leaks and data mines and stuff, I, I always look at them because I'm curious, but I never push them out or base things on them until I see them in the game. But from the stuff that I've seen, uh, there's only one character in one of their ratings that would get a big-ish change. Everything else I'd probably leave the same anyway. So I'm not massively stressed about it. Like I said, I will check when we get into the game while I'm stream, you guys can come help me. We'll check some changes. And I, if any rankings for me change in this, I will put them in the change log and you guys will know if you come back and look at this. Also, if there's a bunch of changes and there is some big ones, I'll make a whole video about it. So I'll keep you guys posted anyway. But for this, I want to jump in. I want to go through every character, give you guys my thoughts on them, talk about the three tiers that I've got, which is early game slash campaign, single target, AOE, late game. Now I will eventually add additional segments to this. For instance, I think it's going to be relevant for chaos, uh, for chaos memory to go through maybe like the top, like maybe four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and talk about you know, maybe some, whether they're good in certain flaws, because that will become very important. Same with simulated universe. You know, it's, it's a, it's something that you're going to have to farm. So giving them rankings in different simulated universe run throughs, I think will be relevant. Eventually I will expand this just so you know. Also massive shout outs to Grimro Gotcha, who is an absolute legend. He actually lives really close to me, which is awesome because I'm down here in the arse end of the world and normally no one's near me. Uh, but he is a massive theory crafter and he's, done run a lot of numbers and helped me with a lot of information uh, and also to the guys at Pridewin um, also Antilla over there been absolutely fantastic fantastic for helping us collect data and all that sort of stuff so have to give those two shout outs you can go check them out down there now, let's get into it. Arlen, first off. So Arlen, essentially early game, like I said, he's not so good because he sacrifices HP to deal damage. And in the early game, everything just hits so hard. Like anything, any battle that matters in the early game is hitting you hard and you don't want to be losing health. Now, I've written it over here in my notes, but basically it's all... He depends entirely on his damage scaling. He's always going to be a handy unit because he doesn't consume skill points. However, there is the opportunity cost that you will have to heal more to keep him alive. But the fact that he has no skill points mean he has, means he has viability, even if he's a little bit lower on the, the, on the damage side than other things. The problem comes if you can run something like Dan Hung on a neutral build where you use skill, then basic attack, skill, then basic attack. And if that rotation on Dan does more damage than Arlen's just normal rotation, then you kind of get into a trouble point where it's like, okay, maybe I want to bring another DPS that doesn't make me have to heal more and maybe offers a debuff or something like that. So that's where Arlen will always sit in the game, in my opinion, is early game bad, late game single target, late game AOE, his cleave is pretty average, but late game single target is always going to be about how his damage scales against other units if they were playing on a neutral build. 
Next, Asta. Now, Asta is really strong in early game. The one problem I have is that we do have the Fire Trailblazer early game, which you don't need to level Asta because of that to get through the campaign because the Fire Trailblazer is so strong. But then once we get into the later game, she becomes a fantastic support. Now, I think she is a character, like, and because and of her multi-hit attack, she's really good at being in single target fire bosses. Now, I think she's a bit of a fire specialist. She increases fire damage. Um, she also... Uh, if the enemies are weak to fire, it's going to help her stack her attack buff more because if they're weak to fire, she gets an extra charge and then if she hits more enemies, it gets more charge. So I think that's really going to help her. The other thing is, I think she's a character that's going to scale really well with gear. And the reason for that is that I feel like if you get enough energy recovery and stuff, she'll be able to have higher uptime of her ultimate. Whereas in the early game, her ultimate uptime isn't so great. So that's what gives her a bit of a, you know, lower pacing uh, in the rankings. Next up, Bailu. Bailu S plus tier in the early game, just amazing. Like I said, things hit so hard in the early game and you got the revive, you got the heals, just fantastic. Now I put her in S in the in the, um, in the the later game, in the, in the single target and AOE. She is still the best healer. The reason I didn't put it to S plus is because you can, we have seen people beating Chaos Memory with um, without using a healer in some teams. Now, if that changes and it's like that, maybe that's just because they were too invested or something like that, I will adjust this. But in general, best healer in the game, only two options, happy days. Uh, Bronya, like I said, early game. Now, the reason I put her at A early game is because I think early game is more defensive. Now, she can work kind of defensively in the early game, but it's not as great. The one reason I'd maybe put her up to S in the early game um, is because when you're fighting easier enemies, she makes it faster. So that's really nice, but she does find a little bit of a harder time against the strong enemies where maybe you want to run three defensive supports. But in general, she's just good throughout the entire game. And then her single target and AOE when we look at later game in bosses and stuff like that is just her support's amazing. Uh, like even with, even with the removal of her ability to buff herself, she is still an amazing support who attacks so often, generates so many skill points, then has the tech of her skill to give an ally a turn when they need it. She's fantastic. Next up, we have Clara. Now, this could be Cope. This could be Cope because Clara and Sparog are my favorite character in the game. So take this with a grain of salt. I normally rate characters that I like harsher than characters that I don't because I don't want to have, you know, bias. But fuck it. Clara is sick. Sparog is sick. I'm coping hard. So Clara, I say S tier in the early game because I think she's one of the best DPS units you can have. Like I said, it's all about turtling um, and taking less damage and she focuses all the damage on her so you only have to heal one unit. She synergizes super well with March so you can put the shield on. Clara just going to revenge and she does massive amounts of damage with all that revenge. The other thing is, while she's got that taunt on her from her, it's not a full taunt, but it's an aggro increase from her ultimate, she's going to be more likely to be attacked. You stack March's shield on that, she's always getting attacked. And the thing is, when you get attacked, you generate energy, then she revenges, which generates more energy. So she's got a really high uptime of her ult, which is going to give her those reve the enhanced revenges, which is going to deal massive AoE damage. On top of that, her skill is just cracked and deals massive damage if they are marked. So I just think Clara is really really good. And I think when I look at AOE units, um, you know, when you think about how you can manipulate her, maybe the RNG is going to shit on me and she doesn't end up doing that much damage because she doesn't get attacked enough. But I think I can make it synergize enough that she gets attacked a lot, which means she has the enhanced revenges. I think her and Himiko are just going to shine in the AOE sector of the game at launch. Hot take, call it cope. Sparog for life. Come at me. All right. Next up, <laughs> Dan Hung. A early game. Um, he's just a good. He's just a good DPS for early game all, all round. Um, and you know that's pretty much all there is. You'll see that I, I didn't really put any uh, DPS units into S plus in the early game. I just put all the defensive units up there because the defensive units are what make the early game. Essentially, you can take whatever. So Dan, really good free to play option. Really good option for free to play single target. I don't know. I. I I need to test him more. I feel like you could get him up higher if you played him perfectly. The thing is with his wind resistance penetration, you really want to be using his ult with that. But, you know, things like AoE heals will proc it. So you can't reliably get his ult to happen with the wind res pen. And that's the thing. Also, he has some pretty good Eidolons. So I think as you get Eidolons, it will go up. This is sort of based on zero Eidolons. So keep that in mind. I think Dan is just a great unit all around. And then he goes into C for AoE because he doesn't have AoE damage and anything with AoE is probably going to be you know a little bit better than him so you know it's still aoe if you got aoe trash and then a single target boss you're bringing him then japad japad i put in a early game i just like the the combo of march and fire mc more in the early game you guys might use japad and 
find it's fantastic and I could be wrong about this. Well and truly could be wrong, but in general, I just, in, this is theory crafting because I didn't use him. So once again, I am not always right. I could be well wrong on this. I just prefer the other shielders in the game and I know you can get through the stuff with them. So that's why I put him down there. Um, and then we just go up to S and S in the, um, in the later game. Single target, he can freeze a single target if they're not immune to freeze. He, uh, AOE, he's going to be blocking massive amounts of damage so whether it's a single target that you're taking it from aoe you got more enemies which means those attacks could get spread between more of your allies which means the shield could be more effective also aoe he's good plus he has high taunt value which means hopefully he's getting attacked more i just think Japard is a great defensive unit in general and that's why he's there. Moving on to Herder. Herder's multipliers. Um, and this is just based on what we knew know from CBT3. If they buffer we this could change. Early game I, I wrote it here her multipliers just feel so low, but she's good for farming trash with Himiko if you're going to go ahead and clear everything in the world every day. Like, that's her niche use at the moment. I do see for free to play that maybe some stages in Chaos Memory, you will want to bring her if you've got like two waves of multiple enemies where they're all weak to ice. I still think that is going to be a possibility that Herder would be a free to play option to bring. But in general, I don't find her as much of a splashable unit. Her multipliers just feel really low. Uh, also, on top of that, ice isn't the greatest break for damage either. It's more about the freeze. You, you're more looking at physical wind and lightning and, and fire um, for the damage based ones. So, you know, even if she is breaking with her with her tan twirl it's still not the greatest break to get in my opinion uh then we go on to himiko himiko a once again like dan i didn't put anyone in s plus i only put like clara and maybe one other unit into s so you know himiko's the next i think she's really good in the early game early game you know you can do a bit of cleave you can get that burn um i find dot units pretty decent in the early game because you can put that dot on and then just let it wear them down and stuff like that uh, and then use basics if you have to so you can prioritize your um you know, your, your defensive abilities, not too bad. Uh, single target, you know, B, she is more of that AOE focus. She does get her um, burn on her skill and everything else as well now, which is handy. But in general, she wants those multi-targets. And I think, like I said, her and Clara are going to be the, the top two AOE units just based on potential, raw potential. When I look at every AOE unit, when I put them all on a board, those two I just think are the best. Once again, Clara could be cope, but hey, Sparog's a thing, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, moving on from that, we have Hook. Hook early game. Really solid because you have a heal as well through a trace, which is really nice. Like I said, it's all about surviving. You got burns as well. Once again, I said I do like dots in the early game. I think they're pretty handy uh, so that you can do some basic attacks if you have to. Um, in general, I think Hook's just an all-round pretty cool unit, um, and that pretty much covers it. The cleave isn't so good, so I didn't give Hook a great rating on AoE, but in general, the single target, once again, going to be really solid in the late game. I can see some real good fire teams coming with like things like, uh, you know, for free-to-play players, Fire MC, Asta, and hook or you know if you got himiko you'd use himiko as well but I, I just think those things are going to be really really solid so we'll have to see how that pans out then we go to march s plus in the early game shields chunky um freezes are all enemies she's just super clutch against especially campaign boss fights and stuff like that hard battles in the campaign you bring march and fire mc and natasha you're gonna live most times than not like uh, like i just think she's just so so good in the early game like all those defensive units um and then we go to single target i put her at a as a support there the thing about uh march which i think uh, like i think it's going to be huge like in my play i used it so much where you put her shield on your on your main dps unit it means they're more likely to get attacked, yes, but who cares? They're shielded. But when they get attacked, they generate more energy, which means they ult more, which they deal more damage. So uh, she's not just, in in my eyes, I could be lost. In my eyes, March is not just a defensive unit. I think she's offensive because she puts that higher taunt value on the ally that you want to generate energy, protects them from that damage, and helps them generate energy. She is an energy battery, in my opinion. Call me cope. Call me wrong. That could could be it but that is my opinion on march and i put her up to s in aoe because once we get to aoe you can freeze more targets you can freeze that aoe pressure if it's getting too much and that's why i put her up a little bit just because you know she's got that more potential with aoe because she mitigates more from that then we jump into natasha once again s plus in early game survivals everything everything defensive besides jeopard unfortunately i put into s plus She's fantastic. Then the rest of the game, I put her in A. Um, she's just not as good as Bailu. It's simple as that. She will get power crept super hard out this game. I completely believe that. But heals are heals, and uh, she's a heal. 
one of only two in the game. Next up, we have Pella. Now, Pella... I think she's a great support unit. Uh, I basically, early game, I don't think she's that great. The defense break and stuff, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for more defensive support early game. But in the later game, I've put her in S. Basically, I couldn't, I didn't want to separate her from Asta. I feel like they're, sim like they're different roles and different purposes and different teams they go in. But I feel like they're same value. So that's why I put her in S in both. Then we go to... <sighs> This chick, whose name I cannot say for the life of me, I don't know if I've heard anyone say it in the VAs, but dude, I cannot do it. But her, okay, this, if I had to say any unit I could well and truly be wrong on, it is her. I was reading through her skills, I was looking into how she works, I think she could be a sleeper, absolute cracked unit, the way she works. If you make her slow, put her on a, a, team, a team of units that get extra turns, or grant themselves a uh, turn gauge, if we look at something like, um, What's her face? Uh, Su Shang. Anything like that that gets extra turns because she flips a tile every time an ally takes a turn. So if you have allies taking a bunch of turns and she's essentially just using her enhanced basic attack every turn, that's pretty cracked. But I don't know. I need to test her a lot more. I don't like the RNG side of thing, but I think the whole idea with her is you never use her skill for that RNG. You're just a basic attack spammer. Just to keep in mind when she uses her enhanced basic attack, it doesn't generate a skill point until we get to Eidolon 6. So I think E6 King K King <laughs> oh, Okay, I'm just going to stop trying to say that name. But I think E6 her could be an absolute sleeper cracked unit that just destroys everything. I want to call it now because if I'm right, it'd be cool. But I, at the moment, E0, I, I, I just hate the RNG. But I feel like someone out there is going to prove us wrong on this and show us that she is absolutely amazing. Sampo, another unit. Once again, Sampo, he may seem low here. I think Sampo at E6... Starting from E4, but especially when we get to E6, I think he's going to go up to like an ST unit across the board. That is my prediction. At the moment, I've got him low uh, because I'm just not too sure. I used him a ton in the beta and absolutely loved him. Once again, this is my bias where I put them down. I, I couldn't do the same with him as I did with Clara because too much cope in one video is a thing. But I think Sampo is going to be like... My prediction, I, I need to test whether he's uh, E4. I still don't know if his E4 procs additional damage every hit of his skill. If it does, I, I this guy's just going to S tier across the board, especially as we get more dot units that he helps support. Himiko got a buff, he helps support. Like, I, I just think he's going to be a great unit all round. At the moment, I've got him low because I'm basing it on E0. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to shut up on him. Zilla, S in the early game. She's, along with Clara, she's the only S damage dealer I put just because she can clap all the ads and she just has so much damage. I, I, I just think she's still a really good damage dealer in the early game. Clara because she's more defensive. Zilla because she's just got all the damage. Extra turns. Makes life easy. Happy days. Quantum damage dealer. Not too bad. Single target. S+. Plus. Uh, AoE, S. Honestly, you could put her S plus AoE. It just depends on the situation, how chunky those ads are, how strong your Zilla is. Will she get the kills and stuff like that? Her raw damage potential is crazy in single target, but then it's even crazier in AoE. However, if you can't kill those units, she loses out a lot of that benefit. So she's conditional, all around great unit. That's pretty much all that has to be said. So Vol. So I've been theory crafting a build on Saval. We've got this three-star Lycone with the key. I'll make a video in the future. Essentially, I think you can guarantee Saval an ult after every two skills. I like that for break. I've conservatively ranked her here, but I think AoE, she could go up to at least an S tier. That is my prediction. I like three-star light cones. I like doing weird shit like that. I think she can be good with that. The other thing I think she can do is that her ult extends dot uh, sorry extends shock durations, which means you can like use her as a plusing unit, which would be really cool as well. Where you put your shock on with the skill at the start or the technique out of battle, then all you have to do is basic and just guarantee. And, and if you have to throw in the odd skill so that she can ult and extend the duration of her debuffs of her shocks. And then she becomes a plusing unit that can still deal really decent damage and have solid break. I think that's pretty fantastic. Then we move on to Su Shang. Su Shang AAC. I think she's probably one of the best um, like free to play units out there. Uh, I've just left her in A because when we look at our other S units, uh, we don't really have any DPS that I put into S. We've got, um, obviously, if we look at single target, we've got an S plus with Zilla. 
and we've got an S with Yang Ching and an S with Welt. So those two, I, I feel like her break capacity for physical is really strong. Um, her damage is really, really solid, but I don't think it's going to be as high as some of the five stars. Her, her Edelon one is nuts for energy efficiency. If you don't have that though, I, I feel so basically at E1, I think she's S 100%, but until Edelon one, she just uses so many skill points. So she's really inefficient. So that's pretty much where she is. Like I said, S at E1 is essentially where I put her. Uh, Ting Yun, uh, B in the early game. Once again, we're looking for more of those defensive supports. Yes, she can be kind of defensive because she could increase the ult gauge of your support unit or your defensive unit. But in general, I think, you know, we're just looking at those more defensive capable supports in the early game. And then when we looked at single target AOE, she can just, it doesn't matter what she, she's like Bronya. Like you can put, and massive shout out to Grim. Um, for theory crafting this kind of team um let me know about it was the hyper carry team where you use ting young and bronya on the same team like it's cracked but even if you only have ting young she's gonna make your best dps better it's essentially what it is uh okay trailblazer honestly i don't care about it's bad to say that i just don't know what to rank this guy i don't think he's damaged crazy but it's like in what scenario are we bringing him and dropping this guy I don't know. Like, f fire over physical every day of the week. Yes, it could have t some uses where you'd rate it higher, but the fact, like, this has, he has to go down, in my opinion, in ranks, because if you take him, you're losing this. And that's how I look at it. Now, I've gone with this as S plus in the early game because it's just amazing early game. You've got fire break, you've got taunt if you need it, you've got shields, even though they aren't too big. Really nice. S uh, in the single target, I think very similar tier as something like a Japard and a March, but I've gone to S plus in AOE because if it's AOE units weak to fire, you've got massive break potential. You've got the basic attack that gets enhanced, goes AOE. You've got the ult that goes AOE. Really, really solid. On top of that, you've got an AOE taunt. So you're taunting all of the enemies away. So I just think absolutely cracked unit, especially for AOE fights in general, just a great unit. I love seeing main characters be strong. Well, I've just put S across the board. Early game, he doesn't have the greatest damage, but he's also defensive because we're trying to stall out the enemies. Slowing them down helps with that. Um, so I just think Welt is a great unit in the early game. And then I think he's just a great unit through the entire game. We've got the slows. We've got the um, the ult effect, which I can't imprison. We've got the imprison. We've got the slows. We've got the multi-hit. He's the only imaginary unit in the game. On top of that, now that now we saw the official change that they made where he's going to increase the damage that all your allies deal to the enemy, which is just fantastic in general. And finishing it off, we have Yang Qing. I think he's, he's interesting in the early game. So I think he's good in the early game because his stat weights allow him to deal really good damage without great gear essentially because he gets that crit rate uh, however if he takes damage he loses his passive hits like a wet noodle but also in the early game we have march who's really really strong at shielding so you can sort of protect him from that so i think he's He's just good in the early game. Uh, single target, I think his damage dealing capacity is huge. Once again, it's just that awkward thing of keeping him shielded. I didn't use him too much, so this could be wrong. He could go down, he could go up. I could be wrong. But in general, that's just my theory around him. Really high damage, really good multipliers. Can freeze as well if the boss is weak, is, isn't is immune to freeze. Like you can freeze them out and then you're not worried about taking damage. So I think he's a good unit. But like I said, I feel like S is a nice balanced place to put him. Could go down, could go up depending on the situation. And then AOE, like a bunch of the single target units, I just put him in C because you're not really doing much AOE and it's just your single target damage that you're bringing to the battle. Anyway, that is going to be it for my tier list. Like I said, you can click on this. You can check the change log. You can see if there's anything changed. I will update it as soon as I can, even during my stream at launch. But I am just about done. Don't forget to be subscribed, leave a comment, and the giveaway. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.